Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, I will show you how you can improve your composition by making the most out of the V-Ray camera settings. In the previous episode, I showed you how to properly expose your interior scene and we took a look at some important material properties. Before we start today's tutorial, I want to remind you that you can find the scene we are working on for download in the video description below, together with the scene assets. Grab them for free and practice at your own pace. To create an interesting and realistic shot, there are a lot of factors to take into consideration. In this tutorial series, we have covered things like lighting, composition rules and post-processing. Now it's time to give attention to one of the most important components and that's the camera. Think of the camera as your primary tool. Based on its position and settings, you will have to adjust the lighting, composition and post-processing. I have already set up my camera to face the kitchen. Let's start an interactive render to visualize our steps so far. As you can see we have a cup of coffee and a cookie, the perfect combination to start your day with. Now let's create an image where the cookie and the cup will be our focal point. But before we do that, let's fix the lighting in our scene. As right now everything is way too bright. One way we can solve this issue is by lowering the intensity of the dome and sun. But I want to show you another way to easily do both. By going to the settings menu and then camera, we have the exposure value or EV. Just by fiddling with the slider, you can find the right amount of exposure for your scene. The EV parameter maintains the same amount of exposure even when you use options like depth of field or motion blur, which affect the F number and shutter speed in the advanced camera parameter settings. If you move the F number or shutter speed on their own, they will affect the lighting in your image. The role of the EV is to maintain the exposure of your image even when the F number or shutter speed are being changed. It does that by controlling the ISO parameter. By decreasing the EV, your image will get more exposed, and by increasing it, it will become darker. White balance allows you to balance the light in your scene to match the natural white light we all see. The way it works is with absorption color. By adding a bit of orange, the camera will absorb it and give us a blue overtone. If you're not sure how to properly set the exposure and white balance for your scene, you can use the auto options. To demonstrate how that works, I will use the production rendering mode. To enable the auto exposure, you have to click the auto button here. Note that this option will only be active if you're using light cache as a pre-pass in non-interactive rendering. In a future episode, we'll discuss light cache and other types of render settings in greater detail. In this tutorial, I will just demonstrate the functionalities of the features. Now all we need to do is start a production render and wait for the light cache to be calculated. Note that we do not need to render the whole image. When the light cache is calculated, we can stop our render and navigate to the auto values. There we can click on the get automatic value button and apply them. Now when we start an interactive render, the lighting in our scene will be balanced. If we take this close up shot in real life, it will most likely have a blurry background, which will help a lot with making our main objects stand out. To help us achieve that look, we can use the depth of field or DOF. The DOF option allows you to point anywhere in the scene and that portion of the image will become in focus while the rest of the image will become blurry. Let's see how that works. By clicking on this target here and pointing towards the lemons, you can see that our focus distance changed. Now let's add a bit of defocus. What happened is that the lemons stayed in focus and the cookies and the cup are now blurred. We can change that by targeting the cup. Now our focus is in the foreground, but the cookie is still too blurry. Let's select the target and click on the cookie. I think this looks much better. Now we can truly admire the cookie. If you want to focus the attention of the viewer even further, you can use the vignetting effect. What it does, it darkens the corners of your image. This utility is part of real life cameras. It gives the image a more photorealistic look. That's why most 3D artists add it as an effect in the post-processing stage. But with V-Ray, we have it directly built in into the camera effects. So you can play around with it while in the production phase. Finally, let's check the vertical lens tilt. This option allows you to tilt or straighten the edges of your scene just like that. With this tool, we can easily apply perspective corrections caused by lens distortions. And that's a wrap for this episode. We went over the camera parameters and by tweaking them we were able to create an interesting close-up shot. I hope you found this information useful and you'll use some of these camera tips to create your own stunning shots. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience.